and welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Prodigy. I got to admit to really liking this show. It's a American animated television series. It's done in 3D. I found myself uh, captivated at times, and I'm going to give this a big recommendation. Star Trek Prodigy is different from Star Trek Lower Decks, which is an animated show, more traditional. Whereas Star Trek Lower Decks is an irreverent comedy with zany type Lower Deck characters. This takes a animated show for children and is more mainstream in that area. You're not going to get the irreverent humor and borderline, you know, um, adult humor in that sense where I would maybe just say Lower Decks is more teenager, adult, and even though it's animated and this Star Trek prodigy would be more child friendly. So in that case, this is a review type thing is over <laughs> in, in a more, you know, roundabout way. Uh, I was a little surprised at how slow it started, but it, I thought it was, you know, well done from the beginning. I just thought maybe it started a little slow, but I don't know. Maybe I'm not giving kids credit, but for me as an adult, I just thought it was a little um, slow on the getting to the point. But after that, the show is just uh, really amazing. There's some things they do, clever camera work. It's like, Hot thing, weird to talk about, but we got an animated show with 3D characters and done, you know, super well, although it's a little overboard here and there. But I think that's what it's made to be, right? A children's show, Star Trek, getting the, you know, science fiction franchise in new ways, and I'm going to applaud them for that. It's created by Kevin and Dan Hagman, or Hagman. Obviously, Gene Roddenberry's the creator. The voices, I don't know the, uh, nothing really jumps out at me, but it's Brett Gray, Ella Pomel, Pomel Jason Matsukas, Angus Inmi. As uh, you can see, I'm not good at names, but uh, cast of voice characters, I don't recognize as their names, but it's almost perfect in that way. Where the voices come together right, um, maybe there's a little surprise at like one character's voice or something, and it's supposed to be part of the uh, joke. And I'm going to give this thing real high praise in the end. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of you know criticism in that way, but I'm trying to think of the only nitpick I have is a small, tiny thing, and it's I thought it maybe started a little slow, but once you're into the show. It's got a storyline, so maybe the next nitpick, and these are just nitpicks, is the fact that they tried to do an episode in between that was standalone, when I really think uh, they should have stuck with the story, the main plot, and tried to use that as a better way to influence your audience and get them you know, keyed in. But again, I'm just nitpicking. I found myself at the end of the show, was it nine episodes or ten, and just wanting more. Same thing with Lower Decks. I'm so happy with Star Trek doing this quality stuff because I've done podcasts on them. I'll go through really quick. Star Trek, the original series, is just magic to me, but I can understand where it doesn't hold up. It's just a classic thing that captivated me as a kid. And then you go into Next Generation, amazing, started off slow. Uh, Deep Space Nine, love it from beginning to end. Voyager, love it. Uh, Enterprise with Scott Bakula, I even, that even won me over. I really enjoy that. So I'm a big fan of Star Trek. The movies, I love them all. Uh, yeah, there's a couple that aren't quality in that sense, but they're just enjoyable movies. So I'll, you know, be critical about it and say, you know, hey, this, uh, this isn't the best, and maybe there were issues with it, but it captivates me enough that I'm enthralled in my Star Trek sci-fi geekness, and I'll get through it all and enjoy it. Might be more critical if I did, you know, one-on-one -on -one, um, podcast for each movie. 
However, we are in a new age. We're in a new age where technology, and I don't know if this is one of those they lend it out to another animation house in some, you know, other country, which I'm going to guess it they do. Uh, does it actually say, like, can I actually do work here? Hmm. Oh, it was made for Nickelodeon. Uh, I don't know. In any case, I'm captivated into the story. It t started a little slow, but I'm really impressed with things they tried to do with the camera and the way you film a movie. And even though these are 3D characters, it treated them like movie or high quality TV. And I mean that not because the animation is, you know, the best 3D animation and I probably wouldn't know, but I'm talking about in the sense of where they set the camera, where the camera pans, how they do close-up shots or pull out. It just elevates the animated show. And we're talking about a show that's really geared for children. And I don't mean like, uh, you know, toddlers, but this is impressive from beginning to end in that general sense. It takes place like five years after the Voyager show and Janeway, Captain Janeway, will be a, um important part of the show. And I thought they did, they knocked it out of the park with that. I've always thought Janeway was one of the best um, captains in Star Trek. She blends Kirk and Picard really well and, you know, prominently uh, displays what I believe Cisco really was good at was the passion and the, uh, the um dedication and in any case we're looking at a star trek animated show and it's 3d done well camera pans the music it all seems to work i think i gave this praise to like marvel's animated show in that way but they weren't 3d it was just things have weight they look kind of real makes you feel immersed and 3d animation will do that for you but like i said this is almost another level to me and it's hard to recognize when you're watching a 3D show. I'll mention one of my favorites, which was Transformers Beast Wars. And it went through its own growth of animation because it came out at a, at a time where it wasn't that good. And it knocked it out of the park. Although I didn't give that show a chance. I think I've mentioned that. Coming from the Transformers original, you know, iteration when I was a kid and it came out and I was there and holy crap type thing. Uh, Beast Wars, Transformers Beast Wars was something I didn't like right away. What, you turned them into animals? This is stupid. And then you watch it and you realize some of the best writing in television ever? Yes, I'm saying that. Again, Star Trek Prodigy, Nickelodeon 3D animation, great actors, the voice acting works. Like I said, I'm really impressed that I even recognized that they were doing impressive camera shots. And sometimes when you watch these animated shows and you're like directed by, and you're like, what fucking directed by? No, this isn't where you can feel it. It feels like um, these are real characters in a 3D environment, not done in a traditional, you know, cartoon way. And they take advantage of that with like using movie, TV show type plots and stuff and as i was saying about loving those shows i mentioned with star trek discovery i'm not a big fan of although i see the quality and amazing actors and actresses i you know kind of just label it like not my star trek i'm not so passionate about it now i will debate picard's first season was done looks well but i fucking didn't like it i don't like the premise and the whole thing they're doing with him so not a fan of that. Strange New Worlds I'll be doing a podcast on. But we're in a really weird time. Great time for Star Trek. And I say a little weird because I feel where they tried to go with Discovery and then Lower Decks came out. Lower Decks to me is where all the critics raved about, in my opinion. Although, like I said, um, Star Trek Discovery has some amazing actors. It's shot. It looks visually in tune with cinema star trek and it's like watching movie on tv type deal yeah it's got all that and i'm sure people like it it's just 
feels wrong to me, and that's maybe something I have to adjust to. Because, like I said, I will legitimately probably argue that, I mean, that fucking first season's blah, but we'll get to that when I do the season twos and stuff. But here I'm recommending Star Trek Prodigy, a 3D animated show, great animation, great cinematography. It's hard to even talk about like that when you're dealing with kid-like cartoon characters and bringing in an well, what we can consider one of the, you know, most respected captains in that way, and there's no spoilers. I mean, this is like silly doing these fucking podcasts, but Captain Janeway's the hologram training program on this ship, uh, the Proto Star, and it starts with a group of slaves, let's say, on a planet, and that storyline progresses, and the main one of the main characters is shown to be someone who always tries to escape and eventually it leads to them finding the ship and but i don't think many are going to complain about a show like this that starts off a little slow and maybe it's just me again it's just the way my brain is and the way i'm trying to get through these shows and you know I've maybe explained this here and there. I fancy myself a blah, 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 writer, and I play Dungeons and Dragons and Game S. I role play Star Trek, and so there's always that thing in my head which is branching off into different directions with stories and stuff. So that's all like not really pertinent to me doing a podcast on Star Trek Prodigy, but I think in the end, this is a show you're going to recommend. I think kids are going to love it. I think adults will love it. It's got heart. You know, it's got the right tone. And maybe, since I'm going to nitpick and say it started off slow, it's got the right tone. And it has the pacing that will carry you. Unlike some other things I might describe as like starting slow, but I'll describe maybe periods of pacing issues, right? You know, where you're supposed to get your highs and lows and dips and dives, your you know, the times where they're doing a lot of talking and giving the plot, this really does a good balance of it all, and it carries me through. Like I said, I was at the end going, wow, where's the next part? Like, when are we getting season two? It's got that feel to it. Done really well. I'm going to recommend the show. It's a 3D animated Star Trek show called Prodigy for Nickelodeon. I mean, I'm 51 years old, born in 71, and what am I doing watching this? It just really is it's that good. And to say it's better than something else, I don't know. So let's say Star Trek Lower Decks, which is a more traditional animation. I can't say it's better. Its quality is different. It's made for a different um, aesthetic. It just gives you a different feel. When I watch Star Trek Lower Decks, I'm into the Star Trek and the nerd sci-fi. But I'm also there for the irreverent humor that borderlines an adult type situations and it's really bombastic in its uh you know approach to that and i love it and i love prodigy for what it's doing it's more geared towards younger audience but it's got a captivating story that carries you through i love the pacing and again the camera work and some in this show i mean yeah it's 3d animation but you can feel like someone had the wherewithal to just immerse themselves in Consider it a movie or a, or a real TV show with a high budget that, you know, gets really good directors who have a feel for this thing. I think it's got to be hard. I'm not an expert on this, but we're talking about an ad, 3D animated world. Wow, like, just trying to get a premise of that and the procedures you use to develop it and go, oh, I'm a director. It just kind of, like, boggles the mind a little bit, but here we are. Star Trek Prodigy. I'm excited for the show. I recommend it highly. I would say watch it. Watch it with kids. Watch it with adults. It's got a good enough storyline that gives you some adult, um, you know, stuff to chew on and think about it because it will highlight, you know, what start, makes Star Trek special and the way its vision of the future, its vision of cultures and societies and intervention in things and it, the prime director there's just so much to love in the show and it really is a um it's a true statement to them being serious about star trek and getting it out there and having different outlets for this 
to expand this universe and franchise in impressive ways. Not just a crap, let's just throw out something to get everybody going. Because like I said, in my, in my head, Discovery didn't bring back and hold the torch for Star Trek quality, you know, in carrying it on. I think it was Lower Decks, in my opinion. But I will admit Discovery got better and it held me longer, but I didn't finish, I haven't finished that. Strange New Worlds, I'm excited about. And I got a show called Star Trek Lower Decks, and I left my ass off with my friend, and we just, well, we smoked weed and just loved the show. And now you got a Star Trek prodigy show. I can sit down with my nephews or, you know, babysit. It's just got that real feel. It's quality, good storytelling, great, like, cinematography for a 3D show. I mean, you're in a starship space, uh, you know, just imagine all the scenarios, and it's geared towards kids. You know, the new crew, some quirky things are going on, and you've got the through line of Starfleet and a new proto prototype ship, which is called the USS Protostar. It's just um, really raving about it. It's got me excited. It's good to see Star Trek doing some quality stuff with a heart in it, and, you know, common sense type, approach that really elevates it and it sounds weird to say that but again we're talking about 3d animation where it's like you know you get real depth and so you can do camera zooms and like try to get an idea of some scale to another and i from beginning to end i, I really didn't find flaws i didn't find nitpicks to really complain about except i'll say maybe a little slow to get into for a kid show but what the fuck do i know in that sense I just am a Star Trek nerd. I love play to, I play a mobile game called Star Trek Fleet Command. I've done some podcasts on it. And I always love it. I role play it. I play with my friends. We've done Star Trek uh, campaigns. Um, just, uh, it's good to have this out there. I'm not embarrassed by a, you know, a product being put out, which I kind of was. When they're changing the tone of Star Trek with Discovery coming back. Although Star Trek Enterprise with Scott Bakula has got this, oh, it only did four years. I think it pulled it out in the end. I think it, you know, had a rough start. Never should have used that fucking opening song, which I think is a good song, but it doesn't fit Star Trek. So you've already changed the tone or whatever. But in the end, the Star Trek Enterprise show, I actually really enjoyed it. And my love for DS9 might encompass all of it and be my favorite for Janeway and Next Generation. It's just good to have quality stuff you can be proud of. Watch it and go, wow, this is good. This is good. And there's some love in there and some talent and inspiration and to, to take it in new ways and try to do this blending of kids show, animation, 3D characters and... Let's give it some heart. Let's pull out your heartstrings and do it in a pretty good way. You know, um, shows like this generally have a theme, and the theme is, um, you know, slavers coming together, escaping, and then learning how to be a team, and they're all young. It just works, and they've got goofy characters and characters that really shouldn't exist. And But that's Star Trek, different races, different species, um, diplomacy, uh, just a general um, diplomatic sense of what the Federation stands for. A clarification that really important in this day and age with me not enjoying a lot of Picard and Discovery and what is going on. How did Starfleet change so much? Why is it so fucking dark and disturbing? And you're going to give me a timeline jump maybe or, um, you know, the new Star Trek movies with Chris Pine and stuff. They thought the Kelvin, I'm doing quotes. It's the Kelvin timeline and Dick things. Cause I'm fine with that. Really fine with that. And I'm happy people love Discovery and, you know, Picard. We're getting his third fucking season, which I don't know how it got. But let's just say Patrick Stewart is one of the most loved humans on the planet. Give him his show. Let him do what he wants. Let him be in control. I'm fine. All right, I'm just not going to run around, you know, ringing the bell, screaming to the heavens for everybody to watch it. But Star Trek Prodigy. 
I don't know what to say. Congrats to Kevin and Dan Hagman. If I'm even saying your name right. <laughs> uh, the voice characters, awesome. Uh, the music, actually spot on. And they did some in, in, you know innovative things with... Because you got a holodeck on the Star Trek. On, I mean, on the Starship. So, you've got every ingredient, everything to make a great show. Because you can really tie into the old lore. And Lower Decks does this too. But this does it more in a traditional sense, where it's a starship, you know, you got your hollow deck and all the transporters and really sticking to a more traditional way of telling a story with Star Trek. But having Kate Mulgrew as, you know, Captain Jane, Captain Captain Janeway is a super bonus because I love her. She's amazing and stuff and her portrayal of Janeway is just might be my favorite captain. They just, just amazing. And believe it or not, Voyager was one of those shows that I, my, me and my friends watched. It had that ability of being more than just Star Trek. If maybe it came at the perfect time, you know, because what they did with Star Trek: The Next Generation and the fifth, or like fifth season or something, is that Deep Space Nine and it starts that show. Right, and then when Voyager starts, they stop by Deep Space Nine, and it's close to final season, and they pass the torch, you know, like America, and it was wonderful. And I was just found that Voyager is a great gateway and entryway into Star Trek that the others weren't. It really had a rocky kind of storyline here and there, but overall, I loved it. But we're talking about Star Trek Prodigy, and I'm going to start ending this now. By saying, yes, it might have been a nitpick to say it started a little slow. But there's no way to be, you know, or like the, most of the episodes are a half hour, right? Or 25 minutes because of commercials. And the first one's like 45 minutes or something. And I think that threw me off. But, again, threw me off in a good way. You know, it might be a nitpick or a warning to say, oh, it starts off a little slow. But what are we talking about? That the first 44-minute episode... Has a little bit of a, of a slow start to get into the storyline because they wanted to focus on a certain area, which is fine. And that's it. Music superb, camera superb, voice acting, chemistry, it all works. And you find yourself really smiling, having a good time. And that's all what this is about. I would sit and watch this show with anybody, just like Lower Decks. You're going to have a ball, you know, the. Um, Staying true to the tradition of Star Trek, and it's just because I think that's one of the fan things that really became prominent recently with Discovery was, hey, you're doing quality shit. This looks like a movie on TV. You've got an actress and actors. Well, the actress I know from Walking Dead, uh, she plays Michael Burnham. She's amazing. I mean, fucking amazing. I love. I don't even know the actress's name, which is fucking pissing me off right now, but. To say that she comes from, oh, let's just say, Walking Dead or whatever, and people might not like the character, oh, she's this, she's that. I think she's amazing. And that whole cast just works. I just don't like the immersion into that storyline and that fundamental change to things that I feel I see. Of, uh, you know, this one, Star Trek Prodigy, watch the show. I recommend it. Yes, kids can watch it, maybe a little bit. You know, I'm not going to even shortchange children these days. They'll get it. But watch, let toddlers watch the fucking show with the Baba. And, you know, it's just captivating. Colors, uh, vivid, uh, sound score, like, really works. And you're going to have a ball watching the show. I'm recommending Star Trek Prodigy. Really amazing. So, watch Star Trek Prodigy. And I hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.